For the longest time, I've wanted to learn game development and emulate my favourite game developers and games. However, after several failed attempts over the years, I thought enough is enough and I finally wanted to start my learning journey this year. However, the same usual questions were there. Do I want to use Unreal or do, or do I want to use uh, Unity? Do I want to do this in C++ or do I want to use Blueprints for this? So I took to Udemy and try, started to try and find courses which could help me on my journey. Uh, after looking for a little bit, I found the perfect course by Ben Tristam uh, around starting my C++ journey in Unreal Engine. The course was absolutely amazing and really highly recommended for anyone that wants to dive into Unreal Engine, whether it be C++ or Blueprint. Um, and after a few weeks of doing the course, I was finally ready to be a full-time game developer. Woohoo! So the question is, what will I make first? And rather than creating my own game from scratch, I wanted to take the totally original approach of remaking a classic game and the mechanics in that game. The idea, however, wasn't to recreate the entire game from scratch, because that requires a full team of experienced game developers uh, and a lot of time but rather to pick out and implement specific mechanics that made the game so great and also allow me to develop in my own uh, C++ gym. The start of the game was an absolute no-brainer for me, Crash Bandicoot. In this first dev series, I'm going to take you on the journey of what it's like to be a completely beginner C++ game developer. I want to show you how I've balanced doing all of this while having a full-time job and also take you through the problem solving process and the process of understanding and identifying bugs in my game. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the project. Now, to help me understand what I wanted to be a part of the game, I wanted to take some reference from the game itself, but also from my fellow YouTube content creators, Danny, Pontypants and Fat Dino. Since this is my first project, one of the things that's going to be super important is managing expectations, meaning I wanted to try and focus on simple yet fun mechanics uh, and omit or leave complex, really complex or tedious mechanics which would likely get me bogged down and make me want to quit early on. After replaying the game for a little bit, I decided to focus on the following things. Firstly, basic movement and animation for Crash. So this meant doing spinning, jumping, and also walking, moving to the right and left. The second thing was crates and the interaction system. So Crash has a lot of crates and elements which make up the game. I decided that I wanted to focus on Nitro, TNT, and basic regular breakable crates. I also wanted to manage how Crash interacts with those in the game. So for example, blowing up when hitting the Nitro or spinning a, a TNT, and also breaking the crates when jumping on them as well. Another thing I really wanted to add was collectibles. So there's two main ones that I focused on here. The Wumper Fruit, which is kind of like the in-game currency, uh, and Extra Life Attribute as well. And finally, I didn't want to push the boat out too far, but I wanted to try and add some basic effects, one really basic level with basic components, uh, and some sounds as well. With that in mind, I drafted up a basic project plan in Milanote, a super easy way for you to identify what the key components of any project are um, and created my first project on, in Unreal. I then added a basic crate to the project and ran it first time and wow I was surprised with how well it worked. Oh yeah that was foreshadowing a lot of these problems are going to happen in this project trust me. The first thing I wanted to do was set up some really basic movement components for Crash. I decided to limit this to spin and also moving to the left and right and jumping up and down. I know later crashes have a bit more advanced movement, but given this was my first project, I wanted to make this as basic as possible. I started off by setting up the basic key bindings in Unreal and creating some movement classes in C++ to get me started. Thankfully, a lot of this was still fresh from the C++ course I'd just done, so this bit wasn't actually too tricky for me. Uh, it just required me to make some small code changes, use some Unreal functions that already existed, uh, and to, to my surprise, this actually worked first time when I compiled, which uh, made me feel pretty good, to be honest. I then created a child blueprint class in Unreal uh, and gave my crash a temporary model which was provided as part of the project starter content. 
So far I was feeling pretty good, but that's because I hadn't really done anything at this stage apart from create key bindings. The next step was to actually create the movement patterns uh, for my model. I then decided to tweak the camera a bit to make sure that it kind of sat in a way that it does in the real Crash Bandicoot game, uh, and then load up the scene. And to my surprise, this actually worked pretty well first time. Uh, cam uh, character was moving, camera was kind of moving with the character, and it seemed to jump pretty well. So yeah, this is a really good starting point, and I was uh, riding a pretty good high at this stage, actually. This was, however, going to come to a grinding halt as I tried to implement the spin mechanic. And this turned out to be quite a bit more difficult than I thought it was going to be. So for now, this is where I left it. Uh, as you can see, I had difficulty stopping Crash from facing forward at the end. Uh, I did actually manage to fix that, but it took a long, long time. Uh, and the ironic thing is I actually ended up scrapping all this code later on. So yeah, uh, but this is all part of the game dev journey for sure. I went over to Sketchfab and got the most basic model of Crash I could find. And as you can see, he's looking in a different shade of purple at the moment. We'll change that later. But for now, he looks pretty good. Uh, but also a little bit of something out of a nightmare. The next thing was to, try and to, was to try and add basic movement for Crash. As you can see, he only kind of spins a little bit at the moment, uh, and he doesn't really move that much either. He's looking pretty rigid. I wanted to change that with animations. Since I'm a beginner, I absolutely suck at animations, so I went where everyone goes, over to Mixamo to find some basic walking, running, and jumping animations. And as you can see, my boy Crash is looking pretty cool with that swag walk. After I chose the animations that I wanted, I imported those into my Unreal project and tried to create state machines for different jumping, idle, and running states. This was, however, where I ran into my first real problem on the project, matching skeletal meshes. So if you don't know, as it turns out, different skeletons can't have the same animation applied. Basically, you import the different skeletons for the different animations from Mixamo, and the Unreal meshes that are created don't really know how to interpret them. So what followed was some pretty interesting behavior for Crash. After some pretty heavy debugging and a lot of frustration, I found that this one janky model of Crash had the same skeleton for many of the animations, so I decided to use that. With that problem finally fixed, I finalized my state machine, basic state machine for the program, uh, and I got my boy Crash moving. Now some disclaimer here, obviously this is pretty janky, the movement speed doesn't match, as a beginner, what I was trying to do was just get the basic movements there, uh, and at the end I will try and optimize and tweak things, but at this stage I was really proud that I could actually get the guy moving, jumping, and sitting in an idle position when not moving. The game offers a rich variety of different crates, and because this is my first project, I wanted to start with three simple ones. The TNT, the Nitro, and the breakable crates. For each, I wanted to add the simple mechanics found in the game. So for example, the TNT and Nitro, I wanted to add explosions if you ran into them or spun the TNT. Uh, and for the breakable crate, I wanted it to break if you spun it or jumped on it. Since my aim for this project was to learn C++ in normal game dev, I decided to get these models from Sketchfab, found some re really good models for these over there, and I had brought them into Maya. In Maya, I decided to add the materials and the different assets that were provided from Sketchfab, and then I imported it into my Unreal project. As you can see, the textures look great. They were really well made. Uh, now what I needed to do was to add some triggers to them so that I could actually implement the mechanics from the game. In order to make the triggers and the mechanics, I had to make a couple of C++ classes to achieve this. My strategy here was quite simple. 
I wanted to have one overarching uh, crate class and then subdivide those into explodable and breakable elements. I would then create separate C++ trigger components for jumping and for spinning and attach those components to each of those crate instances. I got to work doing all the setup, namely creating all the C++ classes and the associated blueprint children in Unreal. Uh, and my first challenge was to try and create the trigger components for each. This took a little bit of time, but ultimately wasn't crazy difficult because we'd learned a lot of the techniques already in the Udemy course. I would say the one bit of trouble I did run into was trying to make sure that whenever Crash was in range, he would, if he spun, it would explode the TNT. This took a bit of time since the overlap events are discrete events, um, but I did some debugging and was able to make it work eventually. And just as an FYI, I would say my approach to a lot of these problem solving was A, to use reference code from uh, courses. So I, I relied heavily on going back through the course I'd done on, on Udemy, but also actually just looking online. There's lots of forums where people have faced really, really similar problems. And that was really easy for me to find uh, solutions. After this, I was able to get it working and log some output to the console. But we know that's not enough. We actually want to see some explosions. So that's the next challenge that I tried to tackle here. Uh, going into it, I had three ideas for how I would make the explosions work. Number one, uh, I wanted to actually use Maya to simulate explosions, since Maya is a really versatile tool for creating simulations. My second idea is that I could manipulate the geometry itself uh, to actually simulate an explosion in, uh, in Unreal. And the third idea was to use particle effects in Unreal. Now, I'm going to give a disclaimer that one and two took me way too long to try and make work uh, and number three took about three lines of code. Uh, so yeah, this, this took a long time and I ended up discarding most of what I've done, but ultimately it was a good learning experience and I've got things to take forward into future projects. As you can see, they look super janky as well uh, and pretty funny. Uh, and here was the three lines of code that I wrote to make the part particle effects work. So this is the end result for uh, part one. Uh, I ended up creating pretty simple particle effects. It interacts with Crash in the way that it should do, uh, either by jumping or by running into it. Um, and there's a simulated explosion as well. So I was pretty happy at the end of this section. I felt pretty fulfilled and uh, it looked more and more like an actual game versus just some random purple dude running around uh, an empty level. So I cleared a few defects and made things look a little neater, but this is essentially what I ended up with after around a week and a half. As you can see, expectations are really important here. Uh, after only a couple of weeks of doing game development, I'm never going to recreate anything close to the actual classic. But the objective of this was to learn by making mechanics, and, and I think I've achieved that here. In the next day of vlog, I'll attempt to add collectibles to the game, namely the Wumper Fruit and the Extra Life. I try and make the game look a bit neater, uh, namely adding UI elements and adding extra effects. And lastly, I try and tackle the mountain of defects that I've been building up since the start of the project. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Uh, this is one of my earlier videos, so any feedback and tips on what game you would like me to look at next, uh, and also any general editing tips are really highly, uh, highly welcomed. So please leave a comment, like, share uh, if you can and want to. Peace out everyone and have a great day.